So chances are you've seen an airplane. You may have even traveled somewhere in one. But have you ever wondered how an airplane keeps itself in the air? A modern airplane can weigh upwards of 600 tons. So how does it not just fall out of the sky? Well, let's try a little experiment. Take a strip of paper, about two inches wide and eight inches long. Now hold it underneath your lip, like this. Now you're gonna take a deep breath and blow out of your mouth over the top surface of the paper. What do you predict will happen? Interesting. When we blow over the top of the paper, the paper lifts into the air. So why does this happen? Well, the reason the paper rises into the air is actually the exact same reason that the airplane is able to stay in the sky. It's a fluid mechanical concept called lift. To understand lift, we need to understand some things about air. Now, while it's easy to think of air as just empty space, the air around us is actually made up of a bunch of tiny particles bouncing around and colliding with nearby surfaces and with each other. The results of all these little collisions is that the molecules create a force on each other and on whatever they come into contact with. So if the air is bouncing against a surface, there's actually a force pushing against that surface. This effect is called pressure. It's a force being applied over an area. If the air particles have more energy, or if there are more of them in the same space, then there are more collisions, so the total force and the total pressure will be greater. So watch what happens when all the air particles are moving in one direction. Most of their energy goes into their movement from left to right, and there are less collisions hitting the surface. So there's actually less force in this direction, and less pressure on the surface. This illustrates a really important fluid mechanical relationship. When the speed, or the velocity, of a flow is higher, then the pressure at any point in the flow is lower. So the bigger the velocity, the smaller the pressure, and vice versa. So what is happening when you blow over the piece of paper? Well, the air coming out of your mouth is moving faster than the air underneath the piece of paper. Now we just learned that faster flow means lower pressure. So the pressure on top of the paper is lower than the pressure on the bottom of the paper. In other words, the air underneath the paper is pushing up with more force than the air on top of the paper is pushing down. And that's what makes the paper rise up. This effect is called lift. So now we can finally revisit our airplane. The secret of an airplane lies in the design of its wings. If we were to cut open one of the wings and look at the cross section, this is what we would see. The wing is shaped in a special way, and it's set at an angle, so that when it flies through the air, the air traveling over the top of the wing actually has to move faster than the air traveling under the bottom of the wing. Again, we just learned that the faster the air is moving, the lower the pressure. There is therefore a greater pressure on the bottom of the wing, where the air is moving slower, and a lesser pressure on the top of the wing, where the air is moving faster. Just like the piece of paper, the forces pushing up are greater than the forces pushing down, and this creates a lift force pushing the wing upward and keeping the plane in the sky. So let's do a little recap. We wanted to know how the airplane and the piece of paper were able to lift up into the air. We learned about something called pressure, and this is where the air particles provide a force against whatever they are in contact with. We also learned that the faster the air is moving, the lower the pressure. Then we saw how the shape of an airplane wing forces the air on top to move faster, and this creates more pressure on the bottom of the wing than on the top of the wing, and that's what pushes the airplane into the sky. So here's a final activity you can do. Remember that the airplane wing is able to generate lift, in part because it is angled upwards. Now, using this knowledge, what do you think would be the best way to launch a paper airplane? Would the airplane fly better like this, with the wings level to the ground? Or like this, with the wings angled slightly upwards? Go ahead and try this for yourself. Fold up a paper airplane, 
and try launching it at a couple different angles. Which one works best? Make sure you can explain why. So that's it for this video. We hope you've enjoyed learning about how fluid mechanics helps airplanes fly. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.